Are you ready? Welcome to the Brands Hatch GP circuit for the penultimate round of the Performance Direct Radical Clubman's Cup. There's a packed grid and some of the drivers have never raced on the GP circuit before and many of them haven't been back here since last year. We caught up with some of the drivers to see what they thought of free practice on this challenging circuit. It, it's always fun, the GP circuit is so special and obviously there are limited days of a year they're allowed to run it. So to get out there is just magic and yeah, fantastic. And how did you find the GP track just now? I like it, it's mega. Uh, there's no point coming to the Indy circuit after you've been on the, on the Grand Prix track, but like I was just saying to Simon, uh, there's not a lot of room, so uh, you can find yourself in trouble quite quickly. It's as good as ever, the circuit. It's an absolute treat to be here. It's just fantastic, fantastic circuit all around, yeah. And what is it you like the most about it compared to the Indy circuit, for example? Well, it's a bit longer and a lot of undulations, a lot of hills and ups and downs, blind corners and so on. It's got absolutely everything and, uh, of course, a lot of history to it as well, you know, so just wonderful. I wish we could come every time. So Colin, I've just seen you doing a bit of work here on the car. Are you making any changes or tweaks to it before you go out for race one? No, we've nothing to do to the car realistically. It's going very well, we're very happy with the Radical. Um, there's an old adage here, if you can get a car to go around Brands Hatch Club Circuit, it'll go around anywhere. And that's very, very true. So you're leaving it pretty much the same as you've had it for free practice? Very much so. A couple of tyre pressure alterations, but that's purely because the temperature's altering. Nothing else. Uh, I need to get more out of the car, uh, especially in the faster corners like Hawthorns. Uh, constantly surprised by how much grip you can get out of these cars. And I surprised myself this morning again. So got uh, lots to do in qualifying. Ben, you've just been out for the first time in free practice on the GP track here at Brands Hatch. How did you get on? Um, yeah, it was interesting. A lot to take in. I mean, I've done the Indies track before and um, early on in the year and it was it was good. Um, a lot to learn, but hopefully we're going out in a minute for uh, qualifying, so hopefully we can put what we learned in free practice into good practice. <laughs> Do you enjoy racing on this track? Yeah, I mean, it's a proper old school track, so uh, it's quite fast, bumpy and narrow, um, which makes it a real challenge. So if we can get a couple of good results here, it'll be uh, yeah, quite good. It was a dramatic, lively and thoroughly entertaining qualifying session with a duel for pole position between Bradley Smith and Matt Bell. They swapped fastest time throughout the session with eventually Bell prevailing to take pole. Stars of the session are arguably Graham and Jennifer Ridgway who put together a very strong performance for their season's best qualifying results. Well, that was a fantastic qualifying there from Jennifer and Graham Ridgway in sixth and seventh place for race one. Let's go and catch up with them and find out how they did it. Yeah, it's a great result and a bit better than I was expecting. So uh, it's, it was really good. And how did you do it? Um, we did some setup changes to the car yesterday and it was a bit strange testing on the, on the short circuit, um, but it gave us a feel of what the car was doing and uh, we tried something new um, and it seems to have worked. So I'm really pleased about that. So Jennifer, you qualified seventh and just one place behind your dad, Graham. Uh, how did you do it? Uh, well, we're finally closing the gap. It's great. Um, I think the mindset's really coming together. Um, there have always been bits and pieces when I've been driving where I've driven really fast, which has been great, but there's always been a bit missing up here. So um, I've really learned how to get in the mindset the last couple of meetings and um, driving's going a lot better, a lot more consistent. So I'm really pleased with it. Will there be any team orders, do you think? <laughs> We were, well, we had a bit of um, an upset at Cadwell because I overtook him during the race. Um, so I beat him last time we were out racing. Um, this time there's been a bit of discussion about whether or not I should see his video and listen to his like <laughs> tips and things. So um, hopefully there won't be too many politics. <laughs> so Matt, you had an amazing qualifying there. Lots of uh, sort of chopping and changing between you and Bradley. Yeah, I mean, after the practice, um, I did a 25-3. Um, so I was hoping to obviously improve on that in the qualifying session. Um, I did a 24-9 at one point. I think he was slightly quicker than me halfway through. Um, once I did the 24-9, I thought he was done and dusted, to be honest with you. I was almost tempted to come to the pit, so I was like, that's, that's safe. And then I saw him get closer and closer, and I think he overtook me at one point, and then again, um, it was pretty high-speed stuff. I think, I think it's probably the fastest lap that anyone's ever done around here in an SR3, um, which was a 124-3, so I went a second quicker. Um, so yeah, we'll see how the race goes. Hopefully I can get a good start. Um, you kept 
swapping places there with Matt Bell. What happened? Yeah, it was a bit close. Um, we uh, just tried to find a clear bit of track, really. Got cut, caught behind a couple of uh, back markers. Um, a few of sort of my best, better ones. But um, no, I think on the whole, the car's feeling quite good and uh, we're sort of quite relaxed. So we'll just have to see how we get on in the race. Yeah. Well, it's almost time for race one to begin. Let's see who out of those two manages to come out on top. Hotly anticipated battle then between Matt Bell and Bradley Smith, but who is going to claim victory? As Rico and Matt Bell, the red lights are on. Out they go and away we go. And Bell slews sideways, but he's got a good start by Donald's going to Bradley Smith, who jumps in to lead the race. So Smith from second leads them into Paddock Hill Bend for the first time. And Bell's having to fight pretty hard here to maintain his second position. He does that. He chases Smith then up Hillwood Hill towards Ruiz for the first time. Around the hairpin and Smith a little bit sideways. He's pushing very hard in these early stages, trying to put the daylight to himself for Matt Bell. As they arrive into Graham Hill Bend, Smith has got the slenderest of advantages over Bell. The pair of them, though, already begin to break clear of the rest of the field as they head around Surtees and out onto the Grand Prix loop. Bell in the wheel tracks of Bradley Smith, but will he be near enough to be able to challenge? Well, certainly not this time round. Battles as ever in the performance direct Radical Club has come throughout the field. It's David Franklin and John Watson dispute position as they head into Surtees again. Watson just trying to squeeze past Franklin. The leaders, meanwhile, streaking through, complete the lap. And Smith still maintains that advantage from Bell by just the slenderest of advantages, the pair of them. Climbing again up the hill towards Druids and snatching a break is Bradley Smith. This is the opportunity for Matt Bell. Can he take it? No, Smith recovers very well from it. So they head down to Graham Hill Bend and Bell is a little bit closer. He's within the car length of Smith, but it's not enough. They both ride out over the Ripple Strip, sprint on the Cooper Strait and into Surtees once more. A good exit from Surtees though, and you can challenge down to Hawthorns. That's what Bell's going to look to try and do as all the while the race time and laps tick onwards as Ben Dimmock is going superbly well in the pro sport class he's just ahead of steve burgess there the pair of them fighting for position in the top five of the field it's a very very competitive pack this is into the traffic smith and bell through sir through sheen rather into sterlings and bell all over the tail of smith but again he just can't find his way through but look at this racing throughout the field wherever you look there is a fantastic dice going on this multi-card affair is for really about sixth position onwards as through clearways for the final time matt bell can he get the run on bradley smith the check of flag is ready and waiting and it's going to be victory to bradley smith but only just from matt bell with andy cummings completing the top three and this of course only the appetizer they've got to do it all over again later on for now it smells on the podium uh, just made sure I, you know I got a good start off the line because um, I had a few sort of you know mistakes last recently. Um, but once I got the start done, you know just focus on trying to go forward um, and you know trying to break a gap. But I mean sort of pushed me all the way. Um, had a few moments with the back markers, but apart from that, you know it was, yeah it was a good race. I knew that the start needed to be good. I think we both played our jokers this weekend, which makes it doubly worse. So I obviously need to beat him in the next one to even it out again. Um, but it was all it was all about the start. And that's really, really what decided the race. I mean, I was probably three, four, maybe five attempts quicker than him, but just due, due to the fact that he was ahead at the start, ruined my race. Top two guys are like two seconds up the road from the rest of us. So um, third was, you know, from my qualifying third was the best I could hope for. And it was a fairly lonely race apart from a bit of a battle with Steve. But yeah, it was a good race. Over the last couple of years, I've seen plenty of radical racing, but I haven't yet had the opportunity to head out onto the track in one. Uh, luckily today, though, I'm going to be heading out in this SR1 with James Abbott, UK Cup driver, on the GP circuit here at Brands Hatch. Here we go. That was absolutely amazing. I loved going around the track. It was just so fast and going into the corner so fast. 
Wow, I'm, I just want to keep going around the track now. James, um, can I go in your race with you tomorrow? Is that all right? Yeah, sure. We've got room for one more. <laughs> I think I might add a bit too much weight to the car, but that was incredible. And you were you were really going for it there as well, weren't you? Going up to the top speeds of the car. Yeah, it's uh, just about the top speed of the car around here. It's 140 mile an hour. Uh, it's, obviously, it's a really nice car to drive, really smooth, um, really good fun. And um, what do you think um, will appeal to people about the SR1 compared to the other packages? I think definitely uh, for what you get, it, it looks like a proper racing car compared to you know the hot hatches and the saloons and stuff. Yeah. It looks a lot faster anyway. Um, obviously, it's a really easy car to drive. Um, that you know driving around there is it's almost it's more of a pleasure almost than an SR8. You yeah. know, um, it's easy to maintain and it's a great little car. You know. And on the straights there, it really felt like we were going so fast. What kind of speeds were we at there? I think it was just about touching 140 out the back and over the top to uh, Paddock Hill. And you can really see how you can break so late into the corner as well. Is that going to be quite a handy thing for people, you know, who are novices to racing? Yeah, obviously it's, it's, it's a whole new sort of mindset, breaking late and how fast you can turn. Um, I think the car kind of... Uh, it kind of hints to that it's not herbie you know it's not going to talk to you but yeah. <laughs> uh you can you can feel what how uh, much potential the car has got very easily excellent well thank you very much uh, for taking me around the track today i loved it <laughs> thanks jay <Okay. laughs> it's almost time for race two to begin here at brands hatch matt bell is on pole this time so let's see if he's able to get that good start that he wanted and stay ahead of the rest of the pack Race two, who's going to get the jump from the line? This time round, it's Matt Bell again on pole, and Bradley Smith alongside him on the front row of the grid. The pair of them, eyes fixed ahead, ready for the off, as the red lights come out to come on in car with Matt Bell once more. Can he make a better jump from the line this time? Away we go, and no, he goes sideways again, and I think Smith's going to jump if he does. So in a repeat of race one, it's Bradley Smith who just gets his nose ahead, as the pair of them tip into Panic Hill Bend for the first time, but Matt Bell is determined to get through, is in the midfield, Andy Harwood can see them four abreast, up ahead of him, that's Tom Jordan in the blue, and Black Car is getting to a couple of places as down out of Druid. And Bell is anxious to get through. He's all over the tail of Bradley Smith into Graham Hill. Ben very, very close between the pair of them. They sprint along the Cooper straight. And again, Smith has to go defensive as Bell looks every which way to try and pick away past him. He's driving a wide car as we're in car with Paul Marsham as he looks to gain ground through Graham Hill. Ben to Andy Harwood. I think it's possibly the driver is demoted by Marsham then as he arrives into Surtees, David Franklin as well, trying to squeeze past him as Bell, coming through Dingle Dell on towards Sheen Curve, trying around the outside on Bradley Smith, that's brave, but Bradley holds his line, and so there's absolutely no way through for Bell, as Andy Harwood has found plenty of people to dice with, and this is the beauty, of course, of the Forks Direct Radical Clubman's Cup, is that wherever you are in the field, there are always people to go wheel to wheel with, not least at the very head of the pack, as Smith and Bell sprint through to complete the first lap of the race with Steve Burgess and Andy Cummings in battle further back down the field. The team's waving them on on the pit wall as they plunge down through Paddock Hill Bend once more and then begin that long climb up towards Druids in car with Bell. On the brakes is Bradley Smith and Bell just can't quite close that gap down sufficiently. So they come out of Druids into Graham Hill Bend and where can Bell make his move? He's really needs to be another car length or so close to Smith it's really going to have an effect he ducks out of the slipstream though has a brief look into Surtees as Paul Marsham makes the move the inside of Bill Henderson into Druids and he makes that stick so that's another place gained from Paul now the difficult qualifying but he's been charging up through the field in both races this weekend it's been a joy to watch him just picking off some of the cars around him oh that's a shame Graham Ridgway walks away and with a car in the exposed position I think the safety car is going to go out here it is and Smith just weaving around behind the safety car the restart is going to be crucial though because this could be a real opportunity for Matt Bell well as ever the marshals at Brands Hatch doing a super job the interjection of the safety car very brief as the safety car peels in away we go and Smith right on the throttle but he's got Bell on his tail as the pair of them sprint towards Paddock Hill Ben once more Climbing out of Paddock then on towards Druids and Matt Bell, he couldn't capitalise then, so he still is in a slightly frustrated second position as Bradley Smith, well, he's not put a wheel wrong all day, he's been defending very, very hard the two races, but at the moment he has not given an opening for Matt Bell as Paul Marsham is up onto the tail of Simon Garmston as he works around 
Madrid uh, heading down. They've got Richard Carver just ahead of them as well in the water red car. And then it's Jennifer Ridge where that bright green car you can see just ahead as well. Jennifer having a couple of really super races this weekend as we ride in car with her. Accelerating out of search. He's in pursuit of Chris Headlam. And down Pilgrim's Drop. Tricky for the drivers really to stretch their right foot. as coming through to end another lap. Bell still getting very familiar with the view of Bradley Smith's wing. We're moving towards the later stage of the race here. So over the start and finish line, the pair of them come. And Bell looking to close that gap down on Bradley Smith as quickly as he can. Maybe have a late race charge as there's the leader of the Pro Sport class, the PR6 cars, Mark Abbott. Mark has ever going well. Oh, a slight spin there for Andy Cummings at Paddock Hill Bend. He should find first gear and forward momentum fairly quickly as Jennifer Ridgway is on the tail of Richard Carver. She is also trying to pick her way past one of the PR6s. We'll find out who that is now. And that is Brian Murphy, who she draws alongside, accelerating along the Brabham Strait. And she's going to attempt to go around the outside of Brian at Paddock Hill Bend. That is going to be very tricky to pull off. Instead, she looks for the switchback manoeuvre, maybe to the inside of Druids. But again, Brian knows where to place his car. So no way through there as Andy Harwood very much in the thick of the action as well accelerating into Paddock he's up behind one of the PR6s but unable to pick his way past just yet as Paul Marsham looks again at position on Jennifer Ridgeway as they come up towards Sheen Curve there's Marsham and Jennifer puts wheel on the grass and around she goes and she does very well to gather that up and that's a little bit frightening for her and the drivers behind as she spun in the face of four cars all squabbling position but they all stayed out of trouble as Bradley Smith heads through the final turn and again Matt Bell chasing him to the line but it's Bradley Smith who does the double in the performance direct Radical Clubman's Cup here at Brands Hatch Matt Bell runner up both times but the drivers given us such superb entertainment with their Mark Abbott coming across the line and he claims pro sport honours well after a hard day's racing a very warm round of applause on the podium and time for the champagne to fly at Brands Hatch. Bradley congratulations on your second win of the day talk us through your race. Yeah I just made another good start again um, got out in front of Matt and uh, yeah again just tried to sort of focus on going forward um, was a bit lucky with the safety car um, didn't, we didn't catch up any back markers that time but you know uh, just kept pushing forwards and uh, yeah it's been a good weekend. <laughs> I got a better start, I got a better run on Bradley, I think we were side by side pretty much the whole lap on that first lap and then as soon as it settled down um, I was just, uh, I just couldn't get within 0.8 of a second. Um, then the safety car came out which blew all the chances of uh, having a back marker to, to hold him up for me to get past. The first race I ended up in the gravel uh, trying to make a f pass for uh, third place so uh, to come third in this race I'm happy with. Uh, the two at the front were in a class of their own today, I couldn't keep with them. Uh, but after the safety car, you know, the guys behind dropped off away pretty quick for the last five, six laps. It was fairly plain sailing, to be honest. Well, that's it for the Performance Direct Radical Clubman's Cup here at Brands Hatch this weekend. We hope that you've enjoyed the uh, really close racing between Matt Bell and Bradley Smith. Bradley came out on top in the end. And we hope that you'll join us again next time for the season finale at Snetterton. We'll see you there. <laughs>